In January 2008, eCademy subject matter experts Thomas and Penny Power had their knowledge productized for global release. The video you're about to watch is the result of that process. To find out how to create your own line of knowledge products for global monetization, or to view videos from other knowledge experts, visit www.productizeyourself.com. So we've looked at what Academy is and how it's a, a mix of the community and the tools you know, that you can use. And you're going to look at the tools later, and they're very important. That's when it's going to start to, you know, this is the brain bit, the tools. Um, we often say that Thomas is the brain of the Academy, I'm the heart of the Academy, and Glenn, our, our CEO, is the, is the nervous system that connects it all together. Um, but if you actually look at you as an individual, okay, you have your whole person. When you are networking, when you're getting to know people, when you're creating friendships, it's the whole of you. It's not this business card that you thrust in front of people's faces. It's not um, the elevator pitch that people tell you to use at a networking event. That, that is, to me, you know, if I, if I could get rid of those elevator pitches and business cards, I'd quite happily do that. Because people use them almost as a crutch to hide behind who they are. And when you're networking, when you're building a network, when you're leveraging your network, people have got to trust you, like you, understand you, know where the value is in you. And very critically, they have to understand your expertise. Expertise is a very, very hard one to isolate in your minds, actually. People, um, people are used to saying what they do, yeah? And, but what is broadcasting, isn't it? You know, this is what I do. It tends to be very one way. It's the way the brands talk to us, isn't it? It's not an engaging way when you say to someone, this is what I do, because that pre-assume, pre it assumes that that person is actually interested in what you do. Now, I don't know about you, but if I go out to a pub in a, on a Saturday night and I sit next to someone, I'm not actually interested in what they do. I'm interested in who they are as a person, what their values are, where they've got family, where they go on holiday, who they are. And if I like them, then I can cope with the thought of spending a bit more time with them. And if I really like them, I might become an advocate of them and tell other people about them. And what you want is network value. You want someone to talk about you when you're not in the room. Okay? I'll say that again. You want them to talk about you when you're not in the room. Otherwise, if you look at telesales, okay, otherwise it's just like having to make a phone call every time. If you're not being remembered for who you are, then nobody's recommending you, and then life will just constantly be hard work. And, you know, Academy has grown. I know we've got this viral way that it can grow, but it's grown by word of mouth. It's grown by trust, belief, and understanding of what our values is. And that absolutely comes down to who I am as a, as a person. Can they trust me? Do I, do I show that I really care, and do I follow through? And it, it comes through as to well, who Thomas is. And then there's obviously the overall brand of the people that we interact with. So your association with people, who you associate inside your network, will make a difference to you. Very dangerous if you associate with the wrong type of people, because your brand comes into that as well. So we want to look at how you can sort of leverage you as a person. And as I said, expertise is the very critical part of that. And expertise is not what you do. It's not who you are. It's what it is that you do that's quite unique and makes you an expert. Okay, so if I was Googling um, a plumber, I really wouldn't care because I would think, well, you know, plumbers are plumbers, okay. But if somebody said to me, this plumber is a real expert, he turns up on time, he's very honorable, he's, um, you know, all these other values about him, then I would go by that recommendation. What you don't want is you don't want your expertise just being Googled and, and compete with all the other people who are doing what you do, because that just puts you into the mass. What you want is for somebody to believe so much in the passion you have that you, for what you do and the difference that you actually are making that they talk about you when you're not in the room. Now, the way to actually find out what this is is quite an interesting one, and I spent a lot of time trying to find it you know, through one-to-ones and telephone conversations and helping our black stars, what is your expertise? And then I found out this analogy that a guy called uh, Roger Hamilton uses, which I absolutely love, and you can put this into practice yourself. If you imagine yourself as a flame, as a, as a candle, okay? So here's the candle, and any candle has got wax, and it's got a flame. Now, when you're in your flame, 
right? If this is you as a person, when you're in your flame, you're bright, you set the world on fire, you can light other candles, you could light a million candles and you don't feel you're using any energy. You come home excited, you're lovely to your other half, life's good. When you're in your wax, it's when you're doing the things in your business that you're not very good at. It's the things that tire you out, the things that irritate you, the bits of your business that you really don't enjoy. Now, if you spend your life in your wax, your business cannot grow. You cannot leverage you. What you have to do is spend the majority of time in your flame. And the best entrepreneurs in the world know what their flame is, and they spend as much time as they can in that. Now, for us, Building Academy, when we realized that, and Glenn, Thomas, and I sat down, we knew the tasks. It's so obvious. You probably can think of them now, the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis that's your wax. And as soon as you isolate those and move them on to someone else, your business will grow because you will feel excited, you'll ooze it, you'll look energetic, um, people will understand you because you'll be communicating your flame and your business can grow. But you know, you're all thinking, yeah, but that takes investment. But it depends what you're in business for. You know, if you're looking for a safe world, it's not being an entrepreneur, it's not having your own business. But if you're looking for an exciting world where you can actually feel you're making a difference every day and you're spending your life actually building your business and growing your business, you need to find a way to get into your flame. And to me, networking is about finding your friendships and finding the people whose wax yeah, um, is your flame. So they want to say, can you do this for me? Because I, I can't bear doing that. I'm useless at it. And you want to find people whose flame is your wax. Yeah? So just think that over again. Right? You're a candle. You want to spend as much time lighting fires, lighting and lighting across the world, spreading that energy out. Once you start being able to do that, that's when you'll be a force that will, stuff will start coming back to you. So let's think about this. So here you are, you're a candle. You've got your wax. Okay? You don't want to spend life in your wax. I know when I was talking about this, I could see everybody's faces. You know, you, your eyes actually change. You start, your eyes start going in a different direction because you start thinking, oh God, yeah, those are all the things I really don't enjoy doing. And then when you're in your flame, I could see everybody smiling because, you know, you're enjoying life at that point. And that flame is what's going to draw people towards you, draw advocates towards you because you want to be an energetic person in network. It's, it's been like an amazing social... St I said to you that I was wanting to do psychology um, at university. Well, I didn't do it in the end because I did stay in the computer industry. But my goodness, this last 10 years has been an amazing social study of watching how people behave with one another. And people that are negative, that say they're tired, they say they're overworked, they don't realise how much they're damaging their reputation because, you know, are you going to give business or recommend someone like that? But there seems to be some sort of culture where some people seem to think it's quite big to say, I'm tired or I'm overworked. It's absolute rubbish. You, know, you want to feel like you're on top of the world. People want to feel that you can cope with anything that's thrown at you. So if you're feeling that way, I can bet your bottom dollar you are spending too much time in your wax and you need to know it and you will know it because over the next week to two weeks, when you're out and about, and it doesn't necessarily need to be with a client, it can be standing in a Sainsbury's queue and making someone laugh, it can be um, at home with your children, there'll be a moment when you know your true value, and you'll get that feeling where you think, boy, did I just change that person's life a little bit there. It might be that you're brilliant at empathizing, brilliant at listening, there's some talent, some core expertise that you have that if you're very lucky, you're already earning your money on the back of that, okay? But what we see in Academy is a massive movement within some people's minds, huge paradigm shifts when we teach them this subject, where they realize that what they were doing was they were working in a corporate, they're working for someone else, and that person had told them what they were skilled at, yeah? You're good at this. And probably it was the same thing that their parents had told them they were good at. You're good at maths to become an accountant.